Apparently, there's a kissing scene as well. Okay. Okay. It, it, is, he's black, right? He is black, yes. So why is it that the first openly gay superhero has to be a black dude? We barely, All right, so, uh, we barely uh, have uh, any black heterosexual superheroes. We got Godfrey in the news, who's a very funny comedian. He's in the news under fire because he wouldn't want to play a gay character. We'll discuss that when we get to the movie section. We've got politicians still behaving badly over corona, as well as citizens trying to profiteer over coronavirus. And then we got Floyd Mayweather's daughter, Yaya, who just seems to be a pure lost cause and a father's nightmare. And we're gonna discuss all that in this video. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the Life Gains channel. We try to help you find life gains in every situation, no matter how chaotic it is. Download this episode on the podcast as well. Follow me on the gram. Let's jump right on into it. So first and foremost, Floyd Mayweather's daughter over the weekend got into a heap of trouble because she's dating NBA young boy. He's a rapper and y'all have to bear with me as I'm trying to learn these young people. And she comes home, finds his side piece who is pregnant in the house, gets into a fight with the side piece, gets her ass beat, go grabs a knife and stabs the side piece. Take a look at this video of them dra dragging young boy out the house, blood all over the kitchen. Here we go. So he's out of jail. The side piece, um, they haven't updated her status, but she's alive. She's in decent condition. And Yaya is just a mess, ladies and gentlemen. One issue that Floyd has had with her, he's tried to tell her about who she dates, and she's just not hearing it. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, for any dad, this is probably something you go through with your daughters. You worry that they get with someone who has respect, someone who will treat them right. And no matter how well you raise your child, male or female, usually the, their outcome is of their own attrition. However, it always gets reflected back to the parents. This girl right now just seems like she doesn't have any respect for herself. This young NBA rapper, whatever his name is, he's got like seven or eight other kids and he's only like 20 years old. This is something she should have had evaluated when she was trying to date him. Um, Floyd has admonished her over and over and over again about indulging in these type of relationships. But she's at an age where she can decide to do whatever the hell she wants to do. And, you know, I think it might be time to give her some tough love and just let it go, Floyd, because she just keeps making bad decision after bad decision. And this young lady better hope that the girl she stabbed, the side piece who is pregnant, is going to be able to come through. Because if something bad happens to her or that baby, Yaya may be Yaya and her ass in jail. So ladies and gentlemen, the life game for this is sometimes it doesn't matter how well you discipline and raise your kids. Sometimes when they grow up, they still need tough love on their own. And I just wish she could snap out of this, start making better decisions. But I would say, Floyd, man, it might be time for you to let this one go. In COVID-19 news, ladies and gentlemen, oh man, I'm wishing everybody out there the best in what they're going through. Please be practicing social distancing. But our leadership in this country, ladies and gentlemen, has absolutely failed us. Absolutely. And we've got people who are failing us as well, regular citizens. The, ro the rogue rocket is reporting that Federal agents seized essential medical gear, including 192 N95 respirator masks, 130,000 surgical masks, 598,000 medical grade gloves from a man in Brooklyn, New York, hoarding and reselling these supplies at a 700% markup. When agents confronted the man, he allegedly lied about his crimes 
coughed toward them saying he had tested positive for the coronavirus. He was charged with assaulting federal officers, making false statements to law officers. Officials took possessions of the items and distributed them to the NYC and New Jersey Health Department saying they will pay the man fair market value for the goods. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever there are these chaotic situations that happen, hurricanes, um, earthquakes, things like that, there are laws put in place so that people can't price gouge. Hardcore libertarians, hardcore Republicans, who always have this mindset of free market, whatever, whatever, that just goes out the window during chaotic situations because people are gonna inherently do evil things and try to monopolize on situations like this when you absolutely shouldn't. And I hope they throw the book at this dude and I hope he doesn't get out because one thing y'all know irritates me on this channel is white collar crime is never punished the way regular crimes are in terms of someone selling a dime bag of weed, they're in jail the rest of their life. You go do a Bernie Madoff, you get jail for seven years. So I want this guy punished and I want him to be held under assault, under accountability, because we need these type of crimes to stop as well. And in federal news with our politicians, Georgia Senator Kelly Loeffler sold a total of $46,000 worth of stock and travel company the day before Trump announced a ban to Europe. Loeffler and her husband also sold off seven figures in stocks after private briefing on the virus weeks before. The question that we want to know is, how are people like her and the senator in my state still have their jobs? How can people like the governor of Georgia go out there and say he didn't know up until like, a, uh, what's three days ago, that asymptomatic people can spread coronavirus. And to further illustrate this from the top level, I've got a chart right here of statements from our own great leader, President Trump, and crazy things he has said about the coronavirus. I'll start with January 2nd. We have it under control, gonna be fine. We had one case reported in the US, no deaths. Now let's move to the middle of the chart. I don't take responsibility at all. Soon you can find a test at a Google website. By that point in time, we had 2,179 cases reported in the United States, 47 deaths. Now let's move right on down here to March 29th. Between 100,000 and 200,000 dead, we've done a very good job. He's estimating that that's about how many we're gonna have dead. Reported cases at that time, 140,886. U.S. deaths by that point in time, ladies and gentlemen, 2,467. And this is from the top brass in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, they dropped the ball on this COVID-19. Yes, they did and they've tried to come back and bend the curve, but every day we hear these Trump press briefings and they just continue to be, they're not motivating, they're not inspiring, they don't help the country heal. So for those of you wondering about all these payments and things that they have done to try to fix the COVID-19, a lot of you all are finding frustration when you go to your state's website to try to apply for unemployment benefits. I want you guys to stay vigilant. Some of you who are independent contractors, self-employed, 1099 workers, you've been denied and you've been denied because, not because this is not allowed for income for you, but because the states aren't prepared for the special clauses that they have put in place for you. So if you've been denied, I will tell you, take a week and go back and reapply. And maybe by then your state will have the guidelines for those individuals because normally self-employed people, people who work for religious organizations, normally you can't get unemployment. And the states have been having to wait for the federal guidelines to take effect and be put in place on their websites. And right now their websites are overblown. You're getting an error message sometimes when you try to get on the web and do it. And you're also getting people on the phone who have no idea what you're talking about because the guidelines haven't come down. 
Stay vigilant, ladies and gentlemen. Go back in there and reapply. You will be able to get those funds, but you're just going to have to stay vigilant and keep going through, which is another issue that shows the drop of the ball of our government because some of these things wouldn't be the way they are if we had taken precautions the way the government is supposed to work. And last but not least, in entertainment and movie news, we've got my man Godfrey, who is a pretty funny comedian. He had this to say about the gay black character they're getting ready to introduce into the Marvel Eternals. And this comes from Valid TV. Take a look. But as a as to play a gay role, I I I I'm not going to do that because for me, it's I want to play a heterosexual role because I represent a certain image. And if if Hollywood were fair, if Hollywood started off fair in the early 1900s, where we weren't in blackface and coons and shit like that and mammies and butlers, if Hollywood were equal, where we all played roles, where we weren't, it wasn't so uneven, you know what I mean? We weren't just playing pimps and hoes and shit. If it were even, playing a gay role wouldn't be as bad. I have no problem with what Godfrey said. Um, I don't even understand why he's under fire. He qualified what he said that he's not homophobic. He supports gay movements. He's all for it, but he just doesn't want to play a gay role. He wants to play a heterosexual role. And I don't understand how that makes anybody upset because he's not degrading your plight. He's just saying that for him, the role he wants to play is that of a heterosexual character. And coming under fire for basically supporting your cause doesn't help you at all. It almost, I wanna say, hurts you a little bit because he's basically saying he supports what you're doing. You should have people from your elk playing those roles. And he did a good job of highlighting some of the history of what it has been for African Americans in the acting industry in Hollywood. So I say my two cents on that life gain is he did fine. There's nothing wrong with what he said. Keep moving and let's just try to get along and survive while we're all under COVID-19. And I wish you all to stay safe, stay indoors, adhere to the social distancing, and let's try to get this country healed up as quickly as possible. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe, go get yourself that life gain. We'll be live tonight, me and the fellas again, breaking down everything that has gone on over the day. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.